the band gets into a scuffle with Metallica over a dressing room, but never pressed a CD, did they even exist? Yes. Yes, they did. Hi, I'm Hurley. This is what the fuck happened to Winterhawk. Winterhawk was a band formed in Escondido, California in 1978. Guitar player and songwriter Nick Winterhawk Alexander was a Cree activist. He envisioned a heavy metal band interlaced with Native American drums and chants that would serve as a conduit for his message. Alfonso Cobb was a drummer from the nearby Rincon Reservation in San Diego County, and he heard about the project that Alexander was putting together. With Frank Diaz de Leon on bass and Alfonso's cousin Frankie Joe on rhythm guitar, Winterhawk was finally ready to take flight. What, you didn't like that? After a few months of rehearsals, Alexander announced that the band was going to New Mexico to Mother Earth Studios to cut an album. The result was Winterhawk's debut album, Electric Warriors. For Alexander, the album was a heavy metal manifesto with powerful lyrics about the destruction of the environment, the plight of alcoholism on reservations, and the history of his people. With their new album in hand, Winterhawk played anywhere they could, including with Exit, a well-established indigenous rock band. Winterhawk promoted abstinence through music, and they also aligned with the Straight Edge movement, which was a response to the excess of punk culture. Followers of the movement abstained from alcohol, tobacco, and recreational drugs. Winterhawk traveled to reservation boarding schools across the American West with their message. While they performed in front of many different tribes, there was a common thread. Many Native American youth faced domestic violence, teen pregnancies, substance abuse, and high suicide rates. For Alexander, these events were paramount, and the time that they spent with the youth they encountered had to leave a lasting impact. Through seminars and music concerts, Winterhawk was able to break down barriers and connect with Native American youth who often had no one else in with to confide. And I'll be back with more after this. The band returned to the studio and relocated to San Francisco in 1980. Winterhawk released their follow-up album, Dog Soldier, and booked high-profile shows to promote the album. While based in San Francisco, Winterhawk shared the stage with such acts as California glam rockers Y&T, Edgar Winter, and a very young Metallica. Can you believe that Lars would make a big deal out of a dressing room? <laughs> Seems like such a sweetheart. I mean, look at him. By the mid-80s, Winterhawk had fizzled out, the band members had went their separate ways, and Electric Warriors and Dog Soldier was trapped on a dying media. 
But in 2010, the album Electric Warriors was found in a record store by Joe Steinhardt, co-founder of Don Giovanni Records. The album intrigued Steinhardt. But the reissue he considered pursuing didn't come to fruition until the COVID pandemic disrupted his active roster in 2020. He began tracking down the old members of Winterhawk, but sadly, only one remained. Nick Alexander lost his battle with cancer in 2017, leaving Alfonso Cobb as the only surviving member. Remastered versions of Electric Warriors and Dog Soldiers was reissued on October 22nd of 2021, along with a recreation of one of the band's original shirts pretty fucking cool. You can find this shirt and the reissues of both albums on Bandcamp and at DonGiovanniRecords.com. Bands like Winterhawk only become more obscure as the last media they were issued in becomes harder and harder to find. It's inarguable that Winterhawk was ahead of their time. Their blend of Native American sounds with heavy metal and their unapologetic excoriation of the white man was powerful. Maybe too powerful for audiences of the time. Thank you for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not a subscriber, and thank you to those of you who already are. If you enjoy our content and you're in a position to help the channel grow, please join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash retro music review. Had you ever heard of Winterhawk? I think I would have remembered Winterhawk. That, that shit stands out. Do you know of another band that's trapped in a vinyl or cassette prison that's just waiting to be released? There's gotta be some bands out there doing some hard time. I'm just saying. Was I surprised to hear that Lars was a dick about a dressing room before Metallica was anybody? No. No. Look at him. Look at him. Where's six free?